Välkommen alla sammen. Human sacrifice. Did it happen in the Viking Age? Uh, well, there are plenty of sources saying that it did, but still very misunderstood. There are, you know, some idealists uh, on one side of the argument saying that all oh, the Scandinavians would never do such a thing. Uh, all the sources are lies. Of course, that's not true, but then we have the other triggered people on the other side of the argument saying, Oh, how can you like the Vikings? They were not a peaceful people. They sacrificed humans like savages. <laughs> As usual, I'm here to piss off both sides with the truth. And this video is going over some of the sources we have of human sacrifice and telling you what it was really about. So the real truth is going to be difficult to determine, of course, uh, why, when, or even really if human sacrifice uh, was actually done historically. Uh, the sources say some different things. Uh, some of them are very reliable, um, uh, some of them not very reliable. I'm not here to tell you I know what happened a thousand years ago. Um, nobody can, but I'm just going over, you know, some of the sources um, objectively, and you can decide yourself which ones you want to believe in. So uh, stick around to the end of the video and I'll share my thoughts on it, but um, on to the sources. The first thing that you'll uh, realize that I want you to take away from the video. Uh, the Norse did not just have mass sacrifice. They did not sacrifice children. They did not sacrifice some poor innocent victims who had kind of no choice in the matter. Like slaves or servants or conquered people or whatever. Uh, that's not the type of sacrifice that happened in uh, the Norse world. It happened in other types of the world but not in Scandinavia. Main thing I want you to take away um, is if there was a human sacrifice on the rare occasions uh, the person probably deserved it and it was going to get killed anyway but as a little bonus the sacrificing people decided to make uh, this legal death sentence kind of an opportunity to uh, invoke the gods and, and spirituality so as you'll see here a perfect example comes in Oiknenga Saga where an evil man named Halfdan was blood eagled. Uh, so he was one of the worst criminals in Norway, uh, raiding and burning down innocent villages. He was eventually caught in Scotland and executed by Blood Eagle, and uh, they dedicated his death sentence to sacrifice to Odin. Um, another example comes in the, uh, a few Frankish sources actually, so that's why we know this is probably a, a very accurate source. Um, uh, the story where Ragnar was invading France, he defeated the Frankish army, and he took 111 of their men as prisoners and hanged them on an island um, and, and uh, to honor Odin, basically. Uh, so this was done, of course, to get rid of the French soldiers. Um, as kind of a death uh, sentence to the prisoners of war, and also to bring terror in the remaining Frankish forces. But of course, this all is related to Odin somehow, and I'll speak about why in a minute. Another source is uh, Tacitus Germania, uh, where the Germanic tribes about 700 years before the Viking Age sacrificed to Odin here. It says Mercury, of course, because this is written by a Roman, but uh, Odin is the uh, Roman equivalent of Mercury, according to many sources. Uh, so make note here that um, uh, animal sacrifices, we have records uh, being sacrificed to various Norse gods, but it does seem like whenever human sacrifices happened, uh, Odin was the god that was given to um, whenever it did happen. Uh, also note that in, in quite a few sagas and skaldic poems, in wartime or in battles, the enemies that the king or chieftain killed with a spear sometimes are referred to as sacrifices or gifts to Odin. So you can see how the term sacrifice in Old Norse had a bit of a broader definition than our modern uh, English understanding of it. Uh, so those mentions of human sacrifice that I just went over, they're all from quite reliable uh, historical accounts. So let's go on to a not so reliable one, uh, Inglinga Saga. Here, a few hundred years before the Viking Age, uh, King Eun was said to sacrifice his sons so that he could live longer. He would sacrifice a son and that would uh, enable him to live an extra 20 years and he ended up sacrificing, I think, six, seven sons and he was said to live to about 200 when his people finally had enough and they said, no more sacrificing your sons. So, of course, that's probably not a very historically accurate uh, account, but I thought I'd include that at least. Uh, another one comes of the 
pagan temple at Uppsala with Adam of Bremen's account. Uh, regarded to be quite an accurate source, but over-exaggerated a bit. But here, he speaks about a major festival where all of Sweden gathered and they sacrificed nine of each species. Uh, men included, which they hung in trees and sung incantations that were so evil that he didn't want to record them. I really want to know what those incantations are, but they're lost, unfortunately. But, you know, this account of human sacrifice here makes me think of a law recorded a couple hundred years ago forbidding the pagan practice of sitting under a hanged man for wisdom or uh, power or spiritual gain. Uh, very similar to the folk tradition of sitting under a coffin of a dead man in it. And by doing that, you would become Trilkenni, as it was called. So, able to see and speak to the spirits uh, to practice magic. Uh, sitting under a hanged man was also done in folk tales um, as something supernatural. So, yeah, I think that uh, the hanging in the tree sacrifice, as it was done in Uppsala there, it was believed to draw the spirits to the area and even Odin and one could benefit by sitting underneath it. That's why a hanging sacrifice uh, may have been done uh, sometimes at least. That could be the purpose of it. Uh, another one is Theotmar of Merseburg. have his uh, descriptions of the uh, royal house at Leida. Uh, every nine years they sacrifice 99 of each species as you can see, uh, men included. Uh, this is a very difficult one. The actual chronicle is regarded to be pretty historically accurate, but the archaeologists have actually dug a lot here around modern Leida and uncovered most of what was here. Uh, it was a huge training center and royal house where many powerful kings ruled from, but they basically have found no evidence of human sacrifice, not in the numbers that uh, it is claimed in this source at least. So. It was probably an over-exaggeration, maybe it was like 9 of them sacrificed uh, instead of 99, if any at all. I'll mention one more, and that's Ibn Fadlan's account of the Rus Vikings. I don't like calling these people Vikings because these were the people that this Arab historian met in the east of Europe. Uh, they were a couple uh, generations removed from Scandinavia. Uh, they were Rus Vikings, but their practices were quite different, we know for sure. And uh, this chronicle basically makes it sound like they were some crazy dudes that have gone off the deep end. Uh, maybe compare them to the uh, Agori in, in Hinduism. So here they sacrificed a slave woman to accompany the chieftain to the afterlife. Uh, she was willing, actually, and chose to be killed along with her chieftain and, and set on the burning ship uh, uh, famous funeral that you have seen uh, so many places. Uh, there was also some rituals. Um, uh, one involved putting her in a chair and raising her over the door frame so she could see her master and uh, other spirits. Uh, she was also held down and basically had a train run on her by the chieftain's men before she was killed. And the men even said that this was something they really didn't want to do. They only did it for love of their chieftain. Long story, and I'll do a whole video on this uh, account, but yeah, we can maybe include this uh, in our list of human uh, sacrifices. Uh, I think those are all the sources, but let me know if I forgot any. You guys see what I mean. Um, they didn't just pick some poor innocent person to brutally sacrifice uh, after they had conquered and enslaved another village. This is not what happened. All sacrifices were either criminals being put to death or sometimes just killing your enemy in battle and they considered that a sacrifice to Odin. Or sometimes it was just willing participants who wanted to accompany someone else to the next life. Don't forget, they believed in reincarnation and uh, it, it makes sense that if they died together at the same time, they would be reincarnated uh, together. We uh, see this in a lot of different poems like the Sigurd Cycle poems, which most of you know. Also, we can maybe count uh, Baldur's funeral and his wife joining him on the funeral buyer there. Now for my thoughts the actual spiritual reasons for human sacrifice. Um, now for this, it's important you know who Odin is, what Odin is. I did a full video on that, you can watch, um, but just look at his name. His name literally means the frenzied one, or ecstatic one, or lord of the possessed, something like that. So when the Norse got to this ecstatic state of mind, for example, uh, during battle, or uh, painful moments, or drug-induced states, trance states, things like that, 
This was believed to be Odin, the spirit of Odin coming and possessing uh, their bodies. There are many ways to get to this state, but one of them is through sacrifices. All over the world, we actually have records of tribal people giving a sacrifice to the gods and then drinking the blood of the sacrificed animal, and then the priest would get to this frenzied state of mind uh, where he was basically possessed by a god. Many places in the world we see this. Uh, no proof of it that it was done in the Norse world, um, but it's fair to assume that they had a similar practice as many other tribal cultures uh, when it comes to these things, especially since we do have records uh, that uh, the Norse did drink animal blood from the sacrificial bowls. We know this. Uh, now, I don't think that's why uh, sacrificed humans uh, happened. I don't think they drank the blood of uh, sacrificed humans like they do in animals, but I think the end goal was the same. They were trying to bring the spirit of Odin to the area to make benefit of it. This is why men in battle could be referred to as a sacrifice to Odin, because Odin is, of course, um, commonly there in battles, as I have shown in other videos. It also explains why people in very intense uh, uh, situations um, or painful situations like getting the blood eagle or even, you know, sexual intense situations like the slave girl who was killed with her master. Um, it explains why Odin might be there, uh, this frenzied energy then too. Uh, it doesn't even have to be cruel uh, or painful or sexual even because uh, at this exact same funeral, they sacrificed the horse there too, uh, but they just had the horse run around like in a fury um, just to get the horse tired and kind of, you know, breathing hard, kind of uh, pumped up. Uh, all these kinds of practices um, can be believed to bring the spirit of Odin uh, to the individual and to the area. These kinds of things may have also been viewed as a uh, positive thing, like if you die in this state of mind where you are possessed by Odin, this frenzied energy, that would take you to Valhalla. Long story, I'll leave that one for another video. But you see what I mean. Uh, so sacrifice could have been believed to benefit the one who was being sacrificed, but also the people around the area, um, even though all of them survived, they lived after the sacrifice, they could still um, benefit from the spirit of Odin coming around and entering the sacrifice victims. Um, like other people could sit beneath the hanged man, for example, for wisdom and spiritual gain. Uh, those are just my thoughts. Um, I don't condone any of this, by the way, especially since there are other ways to bring uh, Odin to the area to benefit from this energy without harming yourself or others. Uh, compare human sacrifice practices like, again, you know, uh, like regular practitioners of Hinduism, comparing them to the Agori. Uh, they do some vile stuff for spiritual gain and wisdom, and they may get to their goals more quickly that way, but there are many um, much more pleasant ways to achieve these spiritual gains. So that's what human sacrifice is. It's kind of an extreme way to reach the spiritual gains uh, that uh, we could do in other ways. That's just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. It was for sure practiced, but not necessary. And remember, it was not sacrificing some innocent victim. The main thing I want you guys to know from this video is that. But uh, that's all I have to say for today. Vi ses nästa gång.